Hello and welcome to another Applied Energy 62 video. In this short quick tip video I will talk about storage in subnetworks. And I know I made a video about subnetworks before, but perhaps I wasn't clear enough because I keep getting questions about this subject. subject. So uh, let's do another short video and talk about storage in subnetworks and even storage in subnetworks within subnetworks so i will go through anything everything here i won't build anything but i will go through everything and explain how it works the big benefit with having storage in a subnetwork is that let's say we have this green network as our main perhaps we have an, an me controller here and we have a, a big network with auto crafting going away somewhere but we have all the storage like you see here and we don't want it in the main network but we still want to reach everything inside and as you can see here on this smart cable I'm only using one channel even though I have all this storage and I can reach it from here as you can see I have no storage within the green network we're still using only one channel so the trick is, and well, I can explain this as well. As you can see over there, we have a net, an uh, ME controller, and here I also have an, a big ME controller. As you might know, you're only allowed to have one controller in each network. And since these are not the same network, it's a subnetwork, the yellow one, we can have one controller here, and we can have another controller in the yellow network. And we can also have one in the red if you would like to. But yeah, it's not needed right now. So this network is connected to the yellow one through this storage bus and ME interface. Power is transmitted through these coarse fiber, but the storage bus here, non-configured, just connected to an ME interface like this, non-configured. This allows us to reach and store everything within the interface network. So when we put items in here, we can store it in the yellow one by do thanks to the storage bus. Here I have 16 con ME drives, I think, disk drives. And then we need an ME controller since we only can have we can only have eight units in one network. And as I said before, this is a totally separate network. So this network can't really see the green one. We can only work from the green and towards the yellow one. So all these one, they are filled quite well, not not filled that much, but they could be filled and everything is accessible from here. But we can also do the same thing in another step, one step below, so to say. And this time I've I decided that in these barrels and in the deep storage unit and I also have my matter condenser here I want to have specific items going into this red network so if we check this storage bus I have specified these items because I know that normally these are the ones you get a lot of we set the priority to one in this one in this storage bus. So this storage bus has a higher priority than all these drives. So whatever we place into the green network will be stored into the yellow network. And since this has a higher priority, we will store it in the red network first, but only these iced items. Now, if we take a look at the red network, we have storage buses to all of them. They are all configured to be priority zero except for the matter condenser. It has a priority of minus one. So all these barrels will be filled up with their respective item. So stone, for example, we can only have two more stones in here. After that, the barrel is full, but the storage bus will make sure that all stone we put into the green network will be placed into the red network. And since the barrel is full, we have to check the next priority. This is the one. So the next stone we put in after 64 stacks will be condensed. Cobblestone, however, 
I have it in the deep storage unit, so this will just keep, keep stacking up. So let me demonstrate. As you can see here, we have almost full with 4096 uh, stone. If we place two more stacks, we will get those 4096, 64 stacks. One additional stack won't make the number go up, but it will make the stored energy in the matter condenser to go up because this had a lower priority than this one and it will be condensed and removed from the game and just turned into energy. And basically that's all the configuration you need. Thanks to this setup I will make sure that my network, my green network, that reaches the yellow and the red one, will never have more than 4096 stone, wood, gravel, dirt, everything else of that point will be condensed. So I can use it later if I want to, or I can just have a trash can here, it, or a void pipe, whatever. Cobblestone will be just keep growing in numbers uh, because a deep storage unit can hold a lot, lot more. And none of those items will ever be in the yellow network or and filling up our drives. You can expand the red network with an ME controller and have even more barrels or however you want to do it. You can have chests. This also works in pure AE2, but I wanted to demonstrate it with barrels instead. And the only thing you need to think about is to have the subnetworks Make sure that only power is trans transferred and then use a storage bus to reach one step below and keep track of the priority in the storage buses. So that's it. I hope this clears out everything you have, <laughs> everything you wondered about storage in subnetworks and even storage in subnetworks within subnetworks. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or and if you like this video, just leave a like and everything like, yeah, you know. Thanks for watching. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.